Okay, the next speaker then is Karen Andrews, Advocacy Centre for Tenants Ontario. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, I will just go, and is there a... We need Sorry. you to get close I beg, to the I mic. I beg your pardon, and... Uh, do ch colors change or something when my five minutes? Because I'm quite committed to doing it in five minutes. Well, there's a, a dingling or something that happens, so. All right. <laughs> and, and the chair, who's the other dingling, will remind you if you have missed it. <laughs> well, that's not true, and uh, th thank Can you. you just pull the microphone down a little bit because we are broadcasting. And, and I hope they didn't hear that last comment of mine, but I, I don't know. Go ahead, Karen, when you're ready, and just relax go for it well thank you mr chair and uh, councillors and people of hamilton for uh, welcoming me here i work at a provincial legal clinic i've been a lawyer for tenants for 30 years i, I started when i was 10. Uh, this is a provincial issue and i have made the trek uh, down the qew and i appreciate the opportunity um, as i say i've been a lawyer for 30 years for the first five years of my tenant practice i never saw a dirty trick eviction ever uh, we had effective rent control. Uh, if you got rid of a, a tenant for arrears or some kind of interference issue, the next tenant paid the same amount of rent. Uh, we had the Rental Housing Protection Act. That was very important. The Rental Housing Protection Act said, landlord, you cannot displace the tenant unless you get municipal approval. And they, they didn't go to the trouble and it, 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 people stayed in place. And, and government actually built a lot of affordable housing uh, when, when, when I started this work. Um, I, I teach at uh, Osgoode Hall Law School. I would say some of my best students are from Hamilton. They always write about housing. They always write about gentrification. Uh, we go through the statute. We talk about displacement, rent eviction, gentrification, white painting. We look at the act. And my students say, but Karen, there's nothing wrong with the act. It looks pretty good. It regulates the process. It's fair to tenants. They're young. <laughs> the, the, the landlords don't follow the rules. They don't follow the rules. I never had one of these. I now have two have come to me in April. I have three illegally evicted people that were going to court to try and get back. Um, the, the, the tenant leaves fluffing is done or not, and another tenant is in there paying double. And that's what's happening all over uh, the province. Uh, there's simply too much money on the table uh, for landlords not to exploit uh, this section of the act. Uh, the fines at the LTB won't deter them. Uh, damages that a tenant can get at the landlord and tenant board won't deter them. There is simply no incentive uh, to keep a tenant in place for a long time. They're paying a reasonable rent. Gosh, escalating rent. If I can get them out of here, I can double my rent. That is what is going on. Now, You've been presented with a report, and I take issue with uh, two points of the stakeholder report uh, that you were provided. Um, so there's talk about, you know, landlords running a business need to generate income. Gosh, with these low rents, how do we repair the unit? I wasn't going to talk about it, but this report does not talk about appreciation. Let's do the math. You're a landlord. You put in $100,000 in a $500,000 property. CMHC says you're appreciating at 6% a year. So in 10 years, your property is worth $800,000. Your $100,000 has grown to $800,000. If you put it in the stock market, it's only grown to 160. Only grown to 160. I mean, listen to me. But $800,000, the wealth that is being created. There's no excuse for landlords not repairing. There is no excuse for landlords evicting decent people who are not at fault and pay their rent. It's an extremely lucrative business. This report does not say anything about that. In fact, poor landlords, low rent, what are we to do? That is not the case. The economic argument. But then, the argument very casually, the report very casually says, you know, you can't, you can't promulgate bylaws like New Westminster did. And I'm, 
I'm here to make the argument that if you ask four lawyers to come up with an opinion on, on an, on an e legal issue, you're going to get five different opinions. So I dispute that you cannot promulgate a bylaw. Our municipal act looks a lot like the act in British Columbia. Do it. Be bold. Take it out for a spin. You are the city of Hamilton and people are suffering. And the costs of not doing it are displacement, our medical costs, shelter costs, and the costs of human misery. And if, if you bring in a bylaw and somebody challenges it, it only means that bylaw is effective. And take them on. Take them on for, for everybody in your community to keep your community healthy and stable. So thank you very much for your time and I wish you well and I hope you stop this because Hamilton, we used to send our housing problems to Hamilton and Hamilton is saying to Toronto, stop calling us. We have our own crisis. Thank you. There's no clapping. I know there's no clapping. Is your family here too? <laughs> Yeah. Uh, sincerely, Karen, I'm glad you drove down the QAW today, so thank you for well, that. Well, I like Hamilton, thank you very much, and, and go any, Ticats. Any questions? <laughs> and now you're sucking up. <laughs> are, are there any questions of our delegate, Councillor Maureen Wilson, please? Good afternoon, thank you so much uh, for being here, and, and just as an aside note, I love your glasses. Oh, well, thanks. You're totally awesome. Um, so I, I just want to make sure um, I'm very clear on your definition of the problem. I know you're not saying um, that we used to be generous of heart and now we're not generous no. of heart. Uh, but if you could have a, a clear, once again for my benefit, uh, a clear articulation of the problem. You're saying people are making loads of money. Uh, we're not taking into uh, into consideration the appreciation uh, that all property owners have enjoyed, not not just a, uh, multiple dwelling owners, but just so I clearly understand and thank you through the chair. Thank you, Councillor Karen, please. So the, the, the Act says that um, uh, if a landlord uh, needs to do major renovations that require a building permit and you have powers under the Building Permit Act, use them. Yep. Um, and, and you go to a tenant and I need vacant possession, the Act is very clear that that tenant can, has a right of return at the same rent. And the problem is that on the ground, landlords are saying, well, this doesn't make any sense. I've just put $30,000 into the unit. I'm going to get the same rent. I'm going to list it on something, and I'm going to get a tenant that is not paying $700 a month, but you know, I'm helping a guy. It's, his has gone from seven to 2800 a month. So that's the problem. And once the tenant is out of possession, and, and the landlord is standing there with the door closed, and there's a new tenant in the building, um, we're working on trying to convince judges that the, the tenants have a right to go back, but that's, that's a hard argument to make. So landlords are not playing by the rules, in my experience. Now, maybe there are landlords that do play by the rules, but this particular problem is landlords who get the tenant out and put a new tenant in when they should not, when, when the original tenant paying the original rent had a right to come back. Councillor? So, if I've understood you correctly, the, the, given the, um, the heightened value of, of the soil, it's causing a real disincentive um, to maintain that rent to, to invest, perhaps, and fix capital or not, or um, to maintain the rent as it is because uh, given the market as it is and given the um, scarcity of the market, yeah. the um, attractiveness of a higher return is just... Well, landlords are of the view that they're not making enough money. Now, I think they're making a lot of money. So the, the tenants are paying their mortgages. So rent is not the biggest part of a landlord's wealth, the, the, the appreciating property is. So we, we never talk about that, and landlords never talk about that. So I still think with effective rent control, you can make a good living mm -hmm. uh, renting apartments. And I see none of these dirty tricks from the big players. 
you know, they, they know the rules. These big complexes, they've got a third of the unit are old ladies who have been there since 1972. A third of them are people that have been in 10 years. A third of them, my gosh, I can get more rent because you're, you're new to me. And they run a portfolio and they run margins and they seem very happy with the money they're making. But this is a particular problem of a small landlord who is angry that, you know, how come I'm stuck with this tenant at $700 a month when I should be getting $2,000 a month. So the infamous case of the tenants on College Street in Toronto, my neighbors, the cast of Baroness Von Sketch, they were paying $1,200 for their beautiful three-bedroom apartments on College. They were rent evicted and displaced. And it, this is all public record. I mean, we have confidentiality <coughs> stuff, but this is public record. The landlord put in tenants that were paying 4,500 for their units. So that's 3,000 a month per unit that the landlord is making. And so when the fine is issued at $25,000, the landlord clears that up in 10 months. Yep. So that's the problem. And in some jurisdictions, um, like in Oakland, California, there's no upward damage limit. So in Ontario, really, you can only get a tenant $35,000, which is why the buyouts are getting better. A $25,000 buyout, a $35,000 fine, you know, I can get certainty with a $25,000 buyout, but in places like Oakland, California, there's no upper end to the damages, so if you will illegally evict me, I'm going to sue you for $200,000. So the fines are a problem, the damages are a problem, like the differential in rent for a year, well, what, what, what's that when you've been displaced and you're going to have to pay a differential in rent for 20 years? Yeah. It's not enough, it's not enough money. And, you know, if we like our communities, we like families in our communities, we like seniors in our communities. I like stability in my neighborhood. And it is being transformed before my eyes and I don't like it. And, and I have an investment in property, but, but there are things about the social good and the public good and we have to think about this. And you know, Matthew Des Desmond in his book, Evicted, said, New York Times bestseller list says, 20 years ago, working people could live in decent places. Yeah. I want to live in that community. Working people should live in decent places. Councillor. Thank you. Thank you. I, I just have one more question. One more question. Sorry, sorry, Karen. Beg your pardon. Thank you. Just because the applause happens doesn't mean <laughs> you can leave. Well, I, other people want to speak, and they have their stories no, that are important. They, they are all important. Thank you. Um, I'm just asking you these things um, because you're, you're bringing up just also an outside of Hamilton perspective. So it's not unique to Hamilton. Um, but uh, there's a lot of emphasis on tenant education. Mm -hmm. um, and I was wondering if you could speak to that. Is, is it your experience that... Um, uh, there, there seems to be a, a lack of awareness of the process, or if you just care to comment on that at all. Thank you, I, Chair. I, I don't think in this climate of greed and illegality that tenant education is so effective. I think landlords know what the game is, and I think tenants know what the game is. And, you know, we hear about tenants being harassed, and, and I think tenants know they shouldn't be harassed, but, but what do they do? You know, wait for a hearing at the Landlord and Tenant Board for... 12 months so and, and it's and I always say to people when this happens you know this is your home and you don't want to feel sick to your stomach when you walk through the lobby and go to your apartment and know the fight that you're having with your landlord so I think the landlords know the rules and I think tenants know the rules and there are other market forces at play that unfortunately you know and, and as a lawyer I think those rules are important I think veracity is important. You know, you should follow the rules. And this is, this is why I don't, I especially don't like these cases because they really are about not telling the truth and, and not following the rules and not letting those tenants back. And for God's sake, you got six units, that, that person is 85, you know? They might not last a long time, then you'll get your $2,700 a month, just wait. And uh, it really destabilizes neighborhoods, and I don't like this. Follow up, Councillor? Thank you to the delegate. Thank you. Thank you very much, Karen, again, for coming down.